we come to Genesis chapter 37 and we look at the life of Joseph and we look at Joseph uh, here and we look at uh, some of the characteristics uh, of this first chapter record of him in Genesis chapter 37 and on to chapter 39 and we'll think of some of the uh, parallels between the life of Joseph and the life uh, of Christ because Joseph is uh, such a great type of Christ uh, and some of the aspects uh, in which we can uh, develop this particular theme uh, but this time we're going to look at Genesis chapter 37 uh, and look at uh, he's been hated uh, why he was hated uh, and then his beloved uh, as the son relate that to the Lord Jesus Christ and of course draw out the practical lessons for our lives let's just pray our God and Father give thanks for this time together to open your word and to pray you'll help us as we read the scriptures we pray you make much uh, of the Saviour we thank you that all the scriptures are about him and we just pray as we look at these scriptures you speak into our lives so give thanks now to pray you help us as we read the scriptures and knowledge how much we need your help as we give thanks in the Saviour's name Amen so Genesis chapter 37 uh, we'll pick it up at verse 1 we'll read the whole of the chapter and we'll read into chapter 39 as well so Genesis chapter 37 uh, reading from verse 1. Genesis chapter 37 verse 1. Now Jacob dwelt in the land where his father was a stranger in the land of Canaan. This is the history of Jacob. Of course when Jacob had left Laban he first settled near Shechem chapter 33 of Genesis. Then he went to Bethel in chapter 35 where the covenant was renewed. And then Jacob travelled south again to Ephra, later Bethlehem, as we know in, in chapter 35. This, of course, is where Rachel died, uh, giving birth to Benjamin. Finally, Jacob went to Hebron, and sometimes uh, a place called Kirjath Arba, where he buried uh, his father. And chapter 37 continues Jacob's story at Hebron. Verse 2, Joseph being 17 years old, was feeding the flock with his brothers, and the lad was with the sons of Bilhah, and the sons of Zilpha, his father's wives. And Joseph brought a bad report of them to his father. Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children, because he was the son of his old age. Also he made him a tunic of colours, but when his brothers saw that their father loved him more than all his brothers, they hated him and could not speak peaceably to him. Now Joseph had a dream, and he told it to his brothers, and they hated him even more. So he said to them, Please hear this dream which I have dreamed. There, were, there we were, buying the sheaves in the field. Then, behold, my sheaf arose and stood upright. And indeed your sheaves stood all round and bowed down to my sheaf. And his brother said to him, Shall you indeed reign over us? Or shall you indeed have dominion over us? So they hated him even more for his dreams and for his words. Then he dreamed still another dream and told it to his brothers and said, Look, I have dreamed another dream, and this time the sun, the moon, and the eleven stars bowed down to me. So he told it to his father and his brothers, and his father rebuked him and said to him, What is this dream that you have dreamed? Shall your mother and I and your brothers indeed come to bow down to the earth before you? And his brothers envied him because his father kept the matter in mind. Uh, the idea in this expression, kept the matter in mind, uh, is that though he was insulted, Jacob pondered Joseph's dreams, uh, for they were clearly from God. Verse 12, Then his brothers went to feed their father's flock in Shechem. And Israel said to Joseph, Are not your brothers feeding the flock in Shechem? Come, I will send you to them. And he said uh, to him, Here I am. Then he said, Please go and see if it's well with your brothers and will the flocks, and bring word to me. So he sent him out the valley of Hebron, and he went to Shechem. Now a certain man found him, and he was wandering the field. And the man asked him, What are you seeking? So he said, I am seeking my brothers. Please tell me where they are feeding their flocks. And the man said, They have departed from here, for I heard them say, Let us go to Dothan. So Joseph went after his brothers and found them in Dothan. And when they saw him far off, even before he came near them, 
they conspired against him to kill him. Then they said one to another, Look, this dreamer is coming. Come therefore, let us now kill him and cast him into some pit, and we shall say some wild beast has devoured him. We shall see what will become of his dreams. But Reuben heard it, and he delivered him out of their hands, and said, Let us not kill him. And Reuben said to them, Shed no blood, but cast him into this pit which is in the wilderness. Do not lay a hand on him, and they might deliver him out of their hands and bring him back to their father. They came to pass when Joseph had come to his brothers, they stripped Joseph of his tunic, the tunic of many colours that was on him, and they took him and cast him into a pit, and the pit was empty, and there was no water in it. And they sat down to eat a meal. Then they lifted their eyes, and looked, there was a company of Ishmaelites coming from Gilead with their camels, bearing spices, balm, and myrrh, uh, on their way to carry them down to Egypt. So Judah said to his brothers, What profit is there that we kill our brother and conceal his blood? Come and let us sell him to the Ishmaelites. Let not our hand be upon him, for he is our brother and our flesh. And his brothers listened. Then Midianite traders passed by, so the brothers pulled Joseph up and lifted him out of the pit and sold him to the Ishmaelites for twenty shekels of silver, and they took Joseph to Egypt. Then Reuben returned to the pit, and indeed Joseph was not in the pit, and he tore his clothes, and he returned to his brothers and said, The lad is no more, and I, where shall I go? So they took Joseph's tunic, killed the kill of goats, and dipped the tunic in the blood. Then they sent the tunic of many colours, and they brought it to their father and said, We have found this. Do you know whether it is your son's tunic or no? Or not? And he recognised and said, It is my son's tunic. A wild beast has devoured him. Without doubt, Joseph is torn in pieces. Then Jacob tore his clothes, put sackcloth on his waist, and mourned for his son many days. And all his sons and his daughters arose to comfort him, but refused to be comforted. And he said, I shall go down into the grave to my son in mourning. Then his father wept for him. Now the Midianites had sold him in Egypt to Potiphar, an officer of the Pharaoh and captain of the guard. Chapter 39 and the first uh, four verses. Joseph had been taken down to Egypt, and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian, brought him from the Israelites who had taken him down there. The Lord was with Joseph, and he was a successful man, and he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. And his master saw that the Lord was with him, that the Lord had all he did to prosper in his hand. So Joseph found favor in his sight and served him, and he made him overseer of his house and all that he had put under his authority. And we know that God will bless the reading of his word. This particular chapter, chapter 37 and chapter 41, are two of the greatest chapters that we see the parallels between Joseph uh, and Christ. Even when we're reading through, uh, there's so many uh, parallels. Uh, the fact that he was the beloved son, and we think of, Matthew chapter 3, this is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Then we think of the hatred of his brothers, uh, when he told them the dreams, uh, they hated him, and remember the expression they used in verse 8, shall you indeed reign over us? And you remember uh, that in Luke chapter 19, I think it is, uh, remember the Lord taught the parable of those that said he will not have you to reign over us. Then, as we went down, uh, we noticed that Joseph was sent. Come, I will send you to them. Uh, and we think of uh, Jacob the father sending Joseph his son. And then we think of the parallel between First John 4, the father sent the son to be saviour of the world. Then we went down, uh, we saw a number of things. They conspired to kill him, and the same was true of Christ. Uh, then... <clears throat> they stripped him of his tunic and remember that Christ was stripped uh, of his coat and they put that crown of thorns upon his head uh, then of course he was sold uh, to Israelites for 20 pieces 20 shekels of silver and the Lord Jesus was betrayed for 30 pieces of silver uh, then of course Reuben rent his clothes and we think of before Christ died the high priest rent his clothes uh, and then of course uh, they dipped the tunic in the blood.
uh, and there's so many other parallels uh, just as we go down uh, the chapter and even the chapter 39 uh, as well uh, but when we come to these verses the story of Joseph uh, is a record of the exaltation of the man who was rejected uh, and one of God's purpose Joseph constantly reminds us of Christ God's beloved son once despised and rejected of men but now exalted the prince and the saviour and this receives the order in the life of Joseph the expression in Genesis chapter 37 the uh, history or generation some translations have of Jacob are mainly occupied with the history of Joseph uh, here we see of course that Joseph was the favoured son and Jacob made him a coat of many colours but in this chapter we see the hatred of Joseph he was hated as a brother and he was hated for uh, three things to look at first of all his privileges the coat was a mark of distinction and honour a coat of extremes with long sleeves extended beyond the hands and reaching in length down to the feet perhaps it was the coat of the firstborn which belonged to the heir was Jacob wise in display and apparent favouritism could he have forgotten the very experience of his own youth and the way he had gained uh, his birthright uh, and it's interesting to look at the life of Joseph uh, in relation to Jacob's life as well then he was marked for his piety or his godliness in the company of the sons of the two slave women Bilhah and Zilpha Joseph was distressed by their sinful behaviour and brought uh, this to their father in a report uh, the sons of the bond woman were sure to hate the son of the free as they do even to the present uh, the advice of the wise man in Proverbs says, My son of sinners entice thee, consent thou not. Uh, never mind a world's hatred, there is a father's love to be enjoyed. And then he was hated for his prospects. Of course, these come from dreams. Uh, first his own, then the brother prisoners in chapter 40, which in look at, and then Pharaoh. In his own dreams, he was the central chief upon earth and the ruling son of the heavens. This caused uh, the brothers say shall thou indeed reign over us it seems that dreams were told with perfect innocence not the vain boast of a lad of 17. Uh, the commentary was that the work of the brothers were always ready to find cause uh, to expand the uh, expand sorry their hate upon him uh, it doesn't seem that joseph is saying it in particular uh, way uh, but it does seem to be interpreted by the brothers uh, as a way for them to expand their hatred of course, this then uh, leaves Joseph then on his own. And then, of course, he is sent by his father to go and look after uh, his brothers. And uh, we notice that uh, Joseph takes that servant role on and reminds us of Christ, the perfect servant, who took upon him the form of a servant, Philippians 2, verse 7. Then we saw that he was sold uh, to the Midianites and then eventually sorry, given to the Midianites and then uh, sold to Egypt, to Potiphar, uh, and here we have God's sovereign purpose. A hideous tale of vulgar hatred and cruelty. Joseph's was described in the whole incident, and later on, uh, in fact, the last chapter deals with Joseph. Ye thought evil against me, but God meant it to good, to save much people alive. And when we think of uh, the cruelty and the evil that was uh, given to Joseph it reminds us of any greater cruelty and evil that was put in Christ on the cross. Can we forget the crime of crimes, the shameful cross, when the Son of God fulfilled the purpose of God in redemption for mankind? We can trace the story of Joseph's humiliation. He was scorned. Behold, this dreamer comes. He was stripped. They stripped Joseph of his coat. He was set at naught. They sat down to eat bread. And perhaps the very provision which Joseph had himself brought them. Amos denounced some of his own generation by saying they drink wine in bowls and anoint themselves with the chief ointments, but they're not grieved for the affliction of Joseph. And then the final insult was he was sold for 20 pieces of silver. But then, of course, when we come to chapter 39, uh, we see the Lord was with Joseph and he was successful. Uh, the Lord blessed the Egyptians' house for Joseph's sake. Uh, and we think of the blessings of uh, Psalm 1, of course, which we can relate to Christ. And of course, we relate here to Joseph. 
that even though Joseph had a difficult time, uh, God still blessed him and used him because uh, of his fellowship with God. And that really is how the psalm starts and really is one of the main themes of the book of Psalms. Psalm 1, blessed is the man, the very first psalm, the very first verse, who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. In his law he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he does shall prosper, or he shall be successful. This is what we see in the life of Joseph, a life of uh, godliness le lived in devotion to Christ and to God. And that God was able to use greatly, uh, even though he faced some difficult uh, and trying circumstances. Let's just pray. Father, give thanks for the life of Joseph, the example that he leaves. We thank you that the Lord was with him. We thank you that the Lord was with us in every circumstance. Father, give thanks that Joseph points us forward to Christ. And we pray as we get our minds focused on Christ, you would help us to uh, live our life for him. So thank you for this time together. Help us to grow in our Christian walk. Help us to become more like him as each day we spend more time with him. So thank you for this time together. We give you all the praise in the Saviour's name. Amen.